Chapter One, Part Two of Commentary in the Gospel of John, Book Five, by Cyril of Alexandria, translated by Reverend Philip Edward Pusey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Thirty-three. Jesus therefore said unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. The Lord is not ignorant inasmuch as he is by nature god of the pharisees bloodthirsty deeds of daring and of the unholy design of the chief priest against himself for with the eyes of deity he beholds now present and mingled with the multitudes the servants who had been chosen by them to take him therefore he makes his answer common indeed as to all the people standing round yet having a special answer to them and at the same time teaches much that is profitable for he threatens them skilfully yea he convicts them of pettiness of soul in regard to those things at which they ought to be pleased and that in another way should their attempt be frustrate even though it were to take place and how we will say going through the whole account for in saying yet a little while am i with you he evidently all but teaches them tell me says he why are ye indignant as though i were lingering too long in this world am i burdensome to you i confess it and am no great pleasure to those who honour not virtue dashing in pieces him who loves not god and smiting at times with my rebukes the ungodly i am not ignorant that i have wrought hatred for myself but do not thus untimely spread forth the net of death for me yet a little while shall i be with you i shall depart with joy when the fit time for my passion comes nor shall i endure any more to be with evil men for not pleasant to me he says is the abode with the bloodthirsting i shall depart from the ungodly as god but shall be with mine own all the days of the world even though i seem to be absent in the flesh but in saying i go to him that sent me he means something again of this kind in vain did ye sharpen against me he says the sword of your own blasphemy why do ye tear yourselves to pieces with fruitless counsels stay the weapon of envy for it is shot forth for nothing it will not subject life to death neither will corruption have the better of incorruption i shall not be holden of the gates of hades i shall not be a dead body in your graves i shall fly up to him from whom i am i shall ascend again to heaven seen as an accusation of your blasphemy by both angels and men for the one shall marvel at my going up the other when they meet me shall say what are these wounds in thine hands and i shall say unto them those with which i was wounded in the house of my beloved the speech then has been made in great meekness and exceeding gentleness for our example in this too whence paul also says that the servant of god must not strive but be gentle unto all men in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves for it behoves the pious mind to be free from all tumult and the fierce motions of wrath and to study to refuse as a wild onslaught of waves what comes of pettiness of soul and to rejoice in thoughts of meekness like breezeless calms and to love to live as much as possible in long-suffering to show himself forbearing to all and hold fast a mind wholly good and to make his conversation with his enemies not unseemly. 34. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. This, too, he says skillfully and with much gentleness, for it means what taken generally is not difficult of comprehension, yet contains it some keen mystery hidden within it. For when he says that he shall ascend to him that sent him, that is, to God the Father, even though they yet attempt to plot against him and do not cease from persecuting him he is saying that he that hath ascended into the very heavens can never be taken by them 
but the truer meaning and that which is darkly signified is this i he says was sent to give you life i came to take away from human nature death which from transgression fell upon it and with long-suffering to bring back to god those who through sin had stumbled i came to engraft the divine and heavenly light in those in darkness and moreover to preach the gospel to the poor to give recovery of sight to the blind to preach deliverance to the captives to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and since it seems good to you in your senselessness to drive forth from you him who sets before you so rich enjoyment of heavenly goods after a little i myself will take me again to him from whom i am and ye shall repent and consumed by unavailing after counsels weep bitterly for yourselves and though ye should fain find yet the giver of life ye shall not then be able to enjoy him ye long for for after having once turned aside and departed from my love towards you i shall wholly shut out from you what is profitable to seek after something of this kind we shall also find in the preachings of the prophets concerning them for a certain one saith of them of jerusalem with sheep and bullocks shall they go to seek the lord and shall not find him for he hath withdrawn from them for they who would not when it was in their power choose life and with foolish reasonings thrust away the good that was in their power how shall they be fit any more to receive it and they who made no account of missing the opportunity how can they have the good things out of their season for it is while the opportunity exists and is yet present that we must seek for the good things that are in it and of it but when it is now passed away and gone by superfluous at last and most vain is all seeking after the good things it contained and verily the blessed paul saith behold now is the accepted time behold now the day of salvation and also while we have opportunity let us do good unto all men for indeed indeed it beseems those who are good in their habits not when opportunity is now passing her prime to have to seek for her good things but rather when she is commencing and showing so to say her most blooming presence and one might yet say much more about occasion out of the divine scripture but leaving it for the labour-loving to search them out i will say a little thing common and in use among us but which yet has no mean profit they say then that those who make pictures on tablets when they represent occasion in human form represent the remaining fashion of her body as pleases them but the head alone like this they represent her behind as bald and very smooth touching it with brilliant tints but from the middle of the skull they hang much hair over the forehead full in front and flowing by this form itself signifying that while any occasion still exists and meets us so to say face to face it may easily be lay hold of but when it is now past how can it any longer be taken hold of being as it were bushy and easy to hold while yet present but when past no longer for this the smoothness behind indicates which all but mocks the hand of him that would hold it since then when occasions are past we have not what they bring let us not slumber when good things are present but rather watch and not when search is useless unwisely use diligence to catch what is profitable and where i am ye cannot come with greatest gentleness does he again put the race of the jews forth from the kingdom of heaven adding words correspondent to those that he had already uttered yet concealing therein a deep mystery for applying our mind more simply to the words and admitting a more surface consideration thereof we say that it signifies something of this sort that he will in no wise be apprehensible by them nor yet will fall into their meshes 
having gone back to the father for not accessible to them shall be the heaven too and he that sitteth by god the father himself how shall he be to be taken of them that seek him this one word therefore is not deep but more suited to the levity of the jews and superior to their understanding for they are found ever to mind what is more low but the exact and secret mind of the thing said is after this sort i he says having escaped the snare of your unholiness shall be received back to god the father for i shall surely prevent in my departure my worshippers in order that having shown the way that upward tends passable to them too i may have all with myself but ye cannot come where i am that is ye shall be found without lot in the divine good things ye shall be without share in my glory and alien from co-reigning with the saints untasting shall ye abide of the gift that is in hope unfeasting shall ye be of the divine marriage feast mine assembly shall ye not see ye shall not ascend up to the mansions above nor shall behold the beauty of the church of the firstborn unseen of you shall be the city that is above ye shall not behold jerusalem in her prosperity for there shall my flock glorify me ye cannot come for the heaven will not receive slayers of her lord nor the cherubim open the gates of paradise for a people to enter in who fight against god never shall a man guilty of impiety against god appease the flaming sword it only knows the pious man and honours the devout and makes faith its covenant of peace some such thought as this shall we bring to what has been said from all sides tracking the sense which is true and befits those who have understanding but we will add to them some few things showing for profit's sake that all who attain unto devout habits shall both be with and feast with christ but they who go along with jewish unlearning not so whence could it be but shall undergo the bitter punishment of their unbelief let then the divine paul come in crying aloud to those who have died to sin for ye died and your life has been hidden with christ in god when christ your life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory and again putting forth his discourse on the resurrection he says and we which are alive which remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord and things akin to this is the saviour himself too seen discoursing of to his disciples for as he sat and did eat with them he says but i say unto you i will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new with you in the kingdom of heaven yea and to the robber who hung on high along with him at the very gates of death through faith in him seizing on the grace of the saints he saith verily verily i say unto thee to-day shalt thou be with me in paradise they then who by obedience have honoured him shall be with him unhindered and shall delight them in the good things that pass understanding but they who refuse not to insult him with their folly albeit sons of the bride chamber shall go away in sorrow to hell to pay bitter penalties for they shall be cast out as it is written into the outer darkness true therefore will be the lord saying darkly to the jews where i am ye cannot come thirty five the jews said then among themselves whither will this man go that we shall not find him will he go unto the dispersed among the gentiles and teach the gentiles seest thou herein again the wretchedness of jewish reasonings seest thou the most miserable surmise of grovelling mind for they do not say that he will ascend up to heaven although they clearly heard 
yet a little while am i with you and i go unto him that sent me but they are imagining the country of the gentiles as though among them were he that sent him unto whom he promised to return but the people of the jews is hereby as it seems prophesying albeit not knowing what it is saying for moved by some divine impulse they present christ to the country of the gentiles in the way of a suspicion thinking of what a little after became true for he was in truth about to go unto the gentiles and teach them spurning jerusalem the ungrateful mother of the jews but note that they do not speak of this simply for they surmise that he will not only depart unto the dispersed of the gentiles but in their stubbornness add and will he teach the gentiles that their suspicion may again beget for them a plea of accusal for the having intercourse with the dispersed of the gentiles by reason of going through their cities or countries was a common thing among the jews and unblamed but to explain the law to aliens and to unfold the divine mysteries to the uninitiated was a matter of accusal and not unblamed by them and verily god found fault with some who were indifferent about this saying by the prophet jeremiah and they read the law without keenly then do they say that he will teach the gentiles casting a slur on him as readily transgressing the law and from what he had afore wrought on the sabbath day believing that to do all things without heed even if they were counter to the divine laws was his habit and that he thought nothing of it thirty seven in the last day of the feast the great day jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink we must search well in this too what it is the most wise evangelist is hinting with some extreme great care calling the last day of the feast great or what it was that induced our lord jesus christ as of some needful reason and belonging to the time to say on it to the jews if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink for he might have used other words such as i am the light i am the truth but turning his explanation to the matters of believing he hath introduced the word let him drink as something necessary in due to the matters of the feast and the aim in what is before us i will endeavour briefly to say when therefore god was ordering what belongs to the feast of the tabernacles he says thus unto moses on the fifteenth day of the seventh month a feast of tabernacles unto the lord and ye shall offer whole burnt sacrifices and sacrifices seven days and the first day shall be notable holy then after enjoining besides the mode of the sacrifices he added again and in the fifteenth day of this seventh month ye shall offer whole burnt offerings unto the lord seven days and the first day a rest and the seventh day a rest and on the first day ye shall take you boughs of palm trees and thick branches of a tree and fruit of a goodly tree and willows and branches of agnes from the brook to rejoice withal having then already in the second book gone through every portion of the above cited passage and expended much discourse thereon we will yet again make mention of it briefly for we said that the feast of tabernacles signified the thrice longed-for time of the resurrection that the taking boughs and the fruit of a goodly tree and the other things besides meant a recovery of paradise about to be given us again through christ but that since it is put at the end that one ought to take everything out of the brook and again to rejoice thereof we said that our lord jesus christ was compared to a brook in whom we shall find all delight and enjoyment and hope and in him shall delight us divinely and spiritually and that he is and is called spiritually a brook 
the most wise psalmist too will testify to us saying to god the father about us the children of men shall hope in the shadow of thy wings they shall be inebriated with the fatness of thy house and thou shalt give them drink of the brook of thy delights and the lord himself somewhere in the prophet says behold i am inclining to them as a river of peace and as an overflowing brook since then the law used to call the first and the seventh day of the great feast notable the holy evangelist himself too called it great not disregarding it seems the accustomed habit of the jews there being then in the ordinances about the feast a mention too of the brook the saviour showing that he is himself that brook which was foredeclared in the law says if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink for see how he removes the mind of the jews away from the types in the letter and transfers fitly the things in figure if at all the aid for the truth for i he says am the brook which by the lawgiver was fore proclaimed in the account of the feast and if one must needs take branches of willow and agnes and thick branches of trees from the brook and christ is not strictly a brook neither yet is the fashion of the feast really in these but they will rather be symbols of spiritual things which shall be given to the pious through christ but seeing that we discuss these things more at large in the second book as we have already said we will not repeat ourselves but will rather follow on to the next thirty eight he that believeth in me as the scripture said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water he shows that vast and ageless is the reward of faith and says that he who does not disbelieve shall revel in richest graces from god for he shall be so replete with the gifts through the spirit as not only to fatten his own mind but even to be able to overflow into others hearts like the river stream gushing forth the god-given good upon his neighbour too this very thing used he to enjoin the holy apostles saying freely ye received freely give and the wise and holy paul to himself longing to be effectual unto this writes for i long to see you that i may impart some spiritual gift and one may see this most exceeding well in both the holy evangelists and in the evangelic teachers of the church who on those who go to christ through faith pouring forth most plenteous words of inspired teaching spiritually delight them no more suffering them to thirst after the knowledge of the truth with their wise soundings all but crying aloud into the heart of those who are being instructed wherefore the psalmist rejoicing in spirit called out concerning them the rivers lifted up o lord the rivers lifted up their voices great and mighty sounded forth the words of the saints and into all the earth went forth their voice as it is written and unto the ends of the world their words such rivers did god the god and lord of all promise to set forth to us saying by the prophet isaiah the beasts of the field shall honour me the dragons and the daughters of the owl because i have given water in the wilderness and rivers in the thirsty ground to give drink to my chosen generation my people whom i formed for myself to show forth my praises very evident then it is that the saviour says that out of the belly of him that believeth shall come forth the grace that through the spirit giveth instruction and eloquence whereof paul too maketh mention saying to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom it is good to know besides that the saviour applied to his own words this saying not exactly as it had been before put out by the divine scripture but rather interpreting it according to its meaning for we find of every one who honoureth and loveth god 
that he shall be like a watered garden and like a spring whose water fails not and what he says a little before to the woman of samaria this now too he clearly declares for there he says whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again but whosoever drinketh of the water that i shall give him shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be to him a well of water springing up into everlasting life and here again carrying up the aim of his discourse to the same meaning he says out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water End of chapter one